Hello there, my name is Ismas and welcome to Top Channel 101. So today we're going to be reacting to the new Unreal Engine 5 demo. Uh, they just released a few days ago, uh, talking about the breakthroughs in the game development industry. I'm a bit skeptical about the claims they're making. So let's talk about them and uh, have a look at them. So let's going to skip ahead to the more interesting stuff. So the first thing they showcase here is uh, the dynamic lighting uh, of characters. You can see dynamic lighting. You can see usually you wouldn't be able to dynamically light a scene like this. I can see we ha you have a point light here and that is kind of uh, illuminating this character. You can even see this shadow around her nose and uh, when she turns off the light, uh, that light, that illumination goes off, goes away and uh, I can see also see she's without even any point lights closer to her face she still you can still see her face uh, because of the global illumination uh, that uh, is coming from this uh, cave entrance here or outlet like that is letting in light and uh, that light is bouncing all around the entire scene so the way you would achieve normally achieve something like this uh, without global illumination or a ray tracing you would just fit, you would just uh, add in some point lights in different locations and then turn their energy a bit low uh, so that you can uh, fake uh, the global lighting uh, but uh, right now they're just having one source of light and uh, then the entire cave is uh, being illuminated with uh, bounced lighting from this i want to talk about mostly uh, the high polygon count uh, they're claiming here much of what you see was built with quixel megascan assets but instead of using the game versions, we use the cinematic versions, which would typically only be used in film. There are around a million triangles each. And thanks to virtual texturing, they all use 8K textures as well. Uh, this is where I'm most skeptical. So they're saying uh, no, in, no, this, in this entire scene, are they using Quixel Megascan uh, assets, uh, which are millions of polygons? This is not really feasible currently, at least with the current technology. Maybe uh, if they are able to compress the file size of the assets, because usually any of these assets, any of these rocks has a lot of polygons. And uh, when you have an asset with a lot of polygons, it usually adds up to the file size. And uh, let me just show you here uh, in an example. Uh, if you go to the Quixel Megascan, which is uh, the same uh, asset library they are using here, uh, you can see if I try to just download this rock here You can see just one single rock here has around 5 to 200 MB so imagine I Don't know how many rocks are here and I'm not sure how the polygon count are for this rock I'm not sure but uh, yeah, so you can see the original version without any optimization would be too large and this is just a single rock now imagine having a scene with hundreds these are uh, hundreds of rocks and uh, you also have different assets and uh, they're claiming they're they're not uh they're not using any normal maps for this they're just loading in uh, the asset as it is uh, like? you would end up with a game of two terabytes so I think, and, and, and I imagine this scene, uh, this entire scene, unless they have a way to optimize uh, the file sizes, uh, this, this, only this scale scene would end up in a terabyte. So yeah, good luck downloading that on your console, uh, your, one, your 250 GB console or one terabyte console, only the scale scene would be enough to fill that, uh, that uh, space for you. And I choose detail down to the pixel. And uh, another th part I wanted to talk about was, uh, Uh, the idea that uh, you won't need to use normal maps ever. Uh, I'm not sure what part of playback spatialized audio. Particles in Niagara can now talk to you also. It's on our chaos physics system. Here we are using it to accurately simulate the real normal maps. No author. This statue was imported directly from ZBrush and is more than 33 million triangles. No baking of normal maps, 
no authored LODs. Yeah, so you still need to bake normal maps because normal maps are not just used for uh, to optimize the mesh, uh, but uh, if you see a surface like, let me just use uh, something different here. Uh, if you see an object like this, I'm using uh, Sketchfab here, and uh, if you go under uh, Model Inspector and look at the normal map, so it's not just used to optimize the mesh, but uh, if you compare the normal map to uh, the final render, you see that some details like this number here. So you wouldn't go into ZBrush and uh, write this using uh, ZBrush. You, you wouldn't write this in, in ZBrush. You wouldn't, same way you wouldn't uh, write this in ZBrush. You would just use a, a texturing a software like Subse Substance Painter. So what I mean here is that uh, normal maps are not just used uh, to optimize uh, the mesh, but uh, it's also used to add details to the mesh uh, that were not there on the original mesh. For example, again, you can't model, or you can't just, you can do it, but uh, it's, it would be a waste of time uh, to write this in ZBrush, even adding these uh, small details there. Maybe those you can add with the ZBrush, but uh, things like text under uh, these surface details here, you normally don't do that in ZBrush because then you would uh, make your workflow way hard. So for example, if your art director decides uh, that uh, they don't want this mesh design, maybe they, they want uh, uh, they want this kind of design here and you bake that in the, you, you model that directly in the normal map in ZBrush, then you would have to go back to ZBrush and uh, smoothen those uh, details out. What is usually done? Are you just model the base mesh? Let me see if I can find that like this without any of those surface details and uh, go to uh, texturing a uh, software like uh, like uh, Substance Painter and uh, use a material that will add in those uh, normal maps or normal details for you. And uh, these lines here, okay, maybe those could be done with a uh, ZBrush or something, but uh, uh, there are some details that are uh, are left for uh, texturing softwares and um, yes yeah, so especially text because we want to be able to change it uh, very quickly are using so normal maps are not going anywhere anytime soon unless they know of a way to optimize uh, the file size or uh, to drop it down a uh, really low an asset like this would be nearly 1 GB just this asset and uh, there's a scene where they have around I don't know a hundred hundreds of those models at the same uh, polygon density. So that only also that scene only could be around a terabyte. So, so this entire walkthrough, walkthrough I imagine would be around 10 terabytes. So good luck playing that on your console. If they had a way to optimize the file size, they would mention it here. Since they didn't mention it, I'll just uh, conclude that uh, they, didn't, they don't really have a way to, to optimize the file size or to drop it down uh, to something significant. Otherwise, as a lot of the demo is very, very, very interesting and uh, it's very promising, except uh, for the few issues I've just talked about, uh, especially when it comes to file size. So and, uh, the outdoor scene here, you can't even count how many, yeah, this motion blur looks great. What I could see happening is that uh, more people will start using uh, game engines for rendering movies instead of using offline uh, renderers like Cycles or V-Ray. Uh, so because this is, to me, looks good enough uh, for use in a, in a TV series, which doesn't uh, require that much fidelity like movies. Uh, so and if you compare, if you compare some of this, the look of this, uh, with uh, some uh, some uh, TV TV series productions, you see that uh, this is even better quality than what TV series are able to produce uh, because of the con the time constraints uh, they have. So uh, this may not exactly move uh, the the uh, the game industry as much as uh, the demo promises, but uh, I think it's going to change a lot. It's it's going to change the 
film industry quite a lot, especially the TV series industry. And as you have already seen, uh, their demo on uh, making of the Mandalorian, uh, you can see uh, they use Unreal for that. So I think it's going to change uh, how TV series are made uh, more than games are made because, yeah, you still have to optimize uh, your meshes. Uh, maybe you don't have uh, to bake. Uh, you ha actually, you also have to bake textures, I think. So there's still a lot of information we need to, to learn about, to understand about this, uh, to draw any final conclusions. But uh, yeah, that's what, that was my take on uh, this. Thank you for watching.